All right, here with Simi Shitu. Simi, long time coming. I don't know if you remember this, but I only started doing this stuff a year ago with you on my iPhone. Remember the little gimbal following you around with the, yeah. So how was, right, let's, let's start with this year. Um, how We're just coming back from Summer League as of like last week or so. How do you feel Summer League went and um, what were the positive, what were the negatives? How did you feel about the Summer League experience? Uh, something went well. Um, I feel like I really showed, you know, what I can do and with the minutes I had. Um, you know, uh, we won in two games and I was able to like display my passing and rebounding ability and just like, you know, just make it being produce, uh, producing and also just being efficient on the floor and everything like that. And also just my defensive, like how much I've grown, I guess, from defense from my rookie year to now, because of my summer league and my first year, I didn't really play that much. So like, it was just good to, you know, get the opportunity and really uh, get out to the scene. So. What's the summer league sort of vibe like? Because obviously you were working on a bunch of stuff. You want to show the coaches, this is how I play now. Um, what kind of opportunities did you have maybe outside of the games to like just take us through the summer league process and what kind of avenues players have to you know demonstrate what they're up to so we we usually have like a training camp like type thing where players come in i think it's a week before or like a week and a half before and they go to the facility and like wherever team they're at yeah. and then we usually you know we'll go through like a lot of breakdown stuff like five on all plays and um, and then it was scrimmage, you know, and then that's when everyone kind of really get into the groove, get a look and, you know, one, see where their game's at, but two, just also just like showcase to the coaches and the front office guys, like, you know, how good you really are and, you know, what you can bring to the table. But I just feel like it's all about like having a role, especially like young guys coming to the league and really finding like your niche, whatever, like, and what you can really bring to, to the table like instantly and you can do it consistently. So like, yeah, just basically that. And then we, we flew to Vegas. The, some teams were there like four days early. We went like a day or two early, yeah. have practice, stuff like that. And then, yeah, the games start and it's basically just all games. We got like one or two practices in, right. yeah. How nice was it to be able to go through that experience again with the Chicago Bulls? You have experience with the Chicago Bulls, the Windy City Bulls. You get to come back into that ecosystem. How much of a role does that play? Because I don't think maybe people think about it, but you're going back to a situation you might understand. Yeah. So how much did that part help you out? Yes. So I had, like, a good amount of options with teams to go to, but, like, I just felt like Chicago, I was just very comfortable with them. And obviously, you know, my coaching staff and the front office, and it was just good to really, you know, be around those people again and, you know, again, like, develop with also the young guys they have now and just, like, within the young core and just, you know, um, just get better with them. But also just, like, it was just good to, like, you know, have my G League coach, Damian Cotter, uh, as my head coach for Summer League. And then also my uh, my other coaches. He's with the player development, too. He was he coached the last two games. Um, so, yeah, it was good to have them, you know, familiar. They know my game. They just kind of, you know, let me. They know what I can do and like what I'm capable of, so just kind of let me like be me uh, within the, the opportunity I had. So, so you had a bunch of good highlights uh, of your summer league experience. Like you said, limited minutes, but you made the most of them. Uh, the one that comes to mind, though, it's not one of your dunks. Yeah. You're throwing that oop up. Uh, how about? Do you think about? highlights in summer league do you think about like hey i'm gonna let this guy just go crazy right now or was it just kind of the right play right time and what was sort of the the ricochet from from the oop because it, it made the rounds i mean i've always been able to like pass and like you know like i like you know i like it feels good to me when i like you know hit an open guy or for like a wide open shot or like have a nice pass to somebody um but yeah like troy troy backs like he's he jumped out the gym so it's like i already knew once i and I knew they were going to press us a little bit. So once I got to the middle, I kind of just made, tried to make the right play. Like, I just feel like I played the right way. And I just, you know, hit the open guy or whatever the right mm -hmm. play is. And obviously, I saw him behind the defense. No one was really paying attention. So I just threw it up and mm -hmm. made, made a, because he had a couple of those in practice too, like putbacks and stuff like that. So like, I wasn't surprised by him catching that really. So. Right. The, the Bulls had a draft pick this year playing with you guys. AO, I struggled with the last name. Desumu. Desumu. Um, what could you tell Bulls fans right now about 
one of their upcoming guys. Uh, what was it like playing with him? What's he like in the locker room? Is what were the experiences like? Yeah, so I I've known him since we were like high school because oh, he really? played in the Jordan Brand game with me. We're gonna get to that. Um, <laughs> and then obviously EYBL stuff like that. So like we're very familiar. We scrimmaged. Or to be, we scrimmaged Illinois actually in college when I was in college, which yeah. is good. But yeah, no, good player. Like very vocal, uh, hard worker. Brings it, comes to bring it every day and like wants to get better, which is the main thing about the NBA and as a pro. Um, and then yeah, he just you know you can tell he loves the game and he wants to be a great player in this league one day. Yeah. So like you're in, you're you're in for a treat. Right. You know? I, I when I, I was obviously I was there with you guys. He yeah. he's a very positive. He looks like a very positive yeah. player. Like a high energy kind of flies around the court. But you mentioned the Jordan Classic game. We're gonna go back to high school now because you had a crazy journey. Yeah. You had a crazy journey coming up through here. We're in Burlington right now, yeah. Corpus Christi alum. You moved here when you were five. Yeah. You moved here when you were five from the UK. Uh, I also got to do the podcast with your brother, so we got some of your UK experiences. Um, but just starting from the top, high school, when did you start to see, or maybe even before high school, when did you start seeing the momentum around your name and basketball is going from maybe a hobby to legitimately, I can make money off this game, I can be in the league? Well, yeah, I've wanted to be in the NBA since I was like seven, eight years old. But like when I when it really hit me was when I went to the um, Fab Frost like freshman All American camp. That was like the first camp I went to in um, it was in Georgia, and I got MVP. And it was like all my like guys I put in the All American game, like Cam Reddish, all those guys were there. Mm -hmm. So we all grew up together. So when I got that, and then. Because at first, like, my family weren't, like, too keen on me going to prep school because, obviously, like, you know, I'm leaving early, young, far away, whatever. But, like, after that camp, like, all the top schools in the country were calling my house, like, and I was just – I just finished grade nine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I went – so I went to – so they are just calling me, calling me, and I was really taking – realizing that, like, yeah, like, I can really do something with this. And then my second year at Corpus – um I got like seven offers like in the first couple of months and from like those like Baylor was there, Kansas State was my first offer, um, Illinois. So they all came to like Corpus Gym to like our practices which was like really huge for Canada and like really changing the, the culture and everything like that over there. So like it was just once I started seeing that I was like at a young age it was like, Yeah, like this is gonna be my job one day. So So yeah, you go from pinning all my friends at Nelson when you're playing, when we're playing you at Corpus, to having, you know, high level uh, colleges and stuff going all the way out here to Burlington to come see you play. Did you have a time? Did you have any time to digest what's going on? Like, hey, like, you know, all this is happening around me. I'm just going to go with the flow. Or did you ever have, you know, some reflection time with your family and friends? Be like, hey, like, this is really, this is going to happen for me, or it's right there, or like, is being being part of you're in the machine now, right? Cause, and it's rare seeing Canadians go through that process. So did you have time to reflect or is it like, I got to work all the way through this and maybe we'll think about it later? A uh, little bit of both. You know, it was good when it would happen, but it was like, for me, it was just like on to the next. Like I was, you know, obviously like making the pros comes with being a top division one player. So like I knew like I was going to get offers after that. And now it's just about getting better and getting to the right fit and obviously getting as much up, um, choices as possible so mm -hmm. I can make the right decision. But um yeah, no, like the people I had around me, even my teammates at Corpus, like they kinda, you know, kept me grounded and like, you know, we didn't really like talk about it like that. Like obviously they're happy for me, but like they know I'm young and they want me to be the best I could be. So it was more of just like continue to keep pushing and everything else will come by itself. Mm -hmm. So like but yeah, it was just it was it was good though, like having like, you know, those uh opportunities very early because like I was just like a young kid and like with a dream like I didn't like my parents didn't expect me to be mm -hmm. doing that stuff that early which is cool and then they started to see kind of okay like it's more than just like a hobby and mm -hmm. like a thing he's going to do in high school like it's kind of kind of take him through right and incredibly talented Corpus Christi team yeah. you had another player who I don't think we knew at the time but he made his way through and with the Cavaliers last episode with with Beyond Duke Cabin Gelly. Um, what sort of what could you say about that period of time with you and Fee together? You guys did play together for a year, am I wrong? Well, technically three. 
Three years. Okay, so you you guys were teammates for some time, and you guys had, you know, obviously two NBA players on your team yeah. against, you know, <laughs> you're out here in Ontario running running crazy. So, um, how was the experience going through that process with someone at a very young age and knowing that maybe both of us could be, end up at the highest level? Well, it's crazy, like because we went to the same middle school, mm -hmm. and then I we played together when I was grade six. He was grade eight, mm -hmm. and then he went to Corpus, and then I came to two years later. And then yeah, we played grade nine and ten together yeah. when I was in grade nine and ten, which is just cool. And like seeing his growth and seeing how like you know his pathway to get to the league and stuff like that, and how he just kind of kept his head down and just you know yeah. believed in himself and just kept pushing and working hard. And it was just crazy, especially the crazy when we first really sat down and took it in was at the NBA Combine when we were both roommates, right. and we were just in the room and like yo, like this is like really like real. Like we came from Alexander's. So you got roommates in the Combine? Yeah. Uh, NBA Combine like three years ago. So how was the draft experience going through it with with P then? Yeah, so and we were we had st we were in the same agency, but like get our pre-draft in the right. same uh, state. We we're in uh, Phoenix, Phoenix. So like we saw each other at like uh, this lifting spot, which was cool. But like it was just crazy, you know, to see how like we both you know made it out and kind of you know got to where we got to, we needed to be and where we always wanted to be, and like seeing our dreams unfold. And it's just like. It was just one thing that, like, we probably won't forget, you know, because we came from literally down the street <laughs> to, like, you know, and right now it's just now we're just, again, just trying to get better and then find our way and establish ourselves, obviously, in the NBA. So when you were coming through the ranks, high school, you mentioned the Jordan game. You're a McDonald's All-American player, five stars across the board, ESPN, 247, everybody – you know, Simi's that guy, and then you make your decision to go to Vandy. Yeah. When you had all the brochures in front of you and all that stuff, um, what what kind of things did you consider before? Because at this point, you have your pick, right? Yeah. Choose choose them. Um, what kind of things did you value when you're looking into a school? Um, for me, it was best fit and where I'm gonna play. And I was my parents. You know, they're you know. They're very high on education and, you know, where I can, you know, get a degree. And mm -hmm. even if I if I left two years later, I mean, after two years, three years, like, I was going to go back or whatever it was, mm -hmm. get my degree. So, like, just being in a school where, like, they have that prestigious, like, right. um, recognition. So I was like, yeah. Um, I had, you know, UNC is a good academic school, too, you know. So I was just like, well, yeah, like, Vandy would just, it stuck out because, one, like, me and Darius were, like, pretty cool and close in high school. And like, um, you guys games complement each other really yeah, well. Yeah, in high school, so like, and then we, and then he was from Nashville, and like he was at number at that time he was number one point guard, I was number one power forward. So like, yeah, like we wanted to do something different because I've always like been the type to try to be like a trailblazer, you know, mm -hmm. like and just you know go to a school where like either people don't expect or go somewhere where I try to build the culture mm -hmm. there and then start something new. So like. Um, yeah, that played a factor, and then just the coaching staff, they really, you know, um, they really showed me that they, you know, obviously want me to succeed and get, uh, achieve my dreams, but also to really win and, you know, be a part of something different and something new, which is good, and Nashville's a great city, you know, and again, like, met great people over there, it was just a great kind of atmosphere, and they also, like, you know, like, the visit was just, like, they, you know, the highest recruit on campus ever. Mm -hmm. So they made sure like everything was, you know, <laughs> so it was, tough. yeah. So it was one of those where like, I was just like pretty much sold on that. And then they also, for me, it was a big thing. It was communication. Like they would FaceTime me like every day. Yeah. Like, or talk, like we're texting most of the day and then I'll get a FaceTime from one of the coaches like every day, which mm -hmm. is like, okay, like they really do care about me even though i have all these other schools that also care about me and also talk to me but like it was just something different it seemed more genuine yeah so uh coming from the five stars all you know yeah. all the accolades coming out of high school um it, it, are there pressures associated with that that you kind of had to develop and understand mm -hmm. or you know what are some things that people don't really prepare you for when you're that high level because you're also this high level coming out of canada mm -hmm. What were some difficulties you faced? How did you cope with stress? You know, like the, the mental side of coming out of high school that highly regarded. Well, for me, like it was different for me because I 
got injured that some uh, the that my senior year, like mid senior year. So like I was able to kind of like refresh myself slash yeah. like I was just going into it now. I just want to be healthy, mm-hmm. like going into my first year in college and like you know my freshman season, like. But, like, I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like I was really prepared for it, like, because I started at a young age, like, at Corpus, the whole TSN stuff and all that stuff like that. Like, and then I was, obviously, like, Twitter, also, it doesn't really, like, matter. You don't really look at that. Like, I try not to look at, like, that stuff, rankings and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, because, like, again, like, those are just very temporary things. And the main goal is to get to the NBA, like, and you see guys all the time that aren't ranked to get to the NBA. So, Um, but, yeah, I just, you know, it was more just like knowing that I need to continue to get better, right. keep my head down. And when I, in high school for me, it was like when I play, a dude is ranked higher than me or whatever, or has his name, like I'm, you know, got to prove and go at him and show that I'm better. So it was one of those. And then for college, it was just like, there wasn't really pressure. It was just about like being able to, obviously be healthy but also like deliver Mm -hmm. what we wanted to do there and like achieve what we wanted to achieve over there but yeah no there was not really pressure going into it and a tough season of andy right i think very early on darius carlin um another nba level guy nba player um he gets hurt early on uh you're coming off the injury yourself and like i said you guys complement each other really well um when the season started not to go the way you guys had probably planned. Um, how did you keep your head up? How did you, how did you keep at it, knowing that this is supposed to be different? Like the, me and Darius, we sat down, we talked about like we're going to a program together. We're supposed to run, it, and now it's not going that way. How do you, how do you keep a positive mindset? Did you keep a positive mindset? Did you have any lows during that time? Take us through that. If you can. Well, for me, without that time, I really, you know. Um, rediscovered my faith a lot and I was really just like in prayer and just really like reading the Bible and everything and just trying to figure out like you know obviously this is probably like the lowest time one of the lowest times of my life and I was trying to think about like how to really get over that hump but also just like again like pressing forward and making making sure that like you know this isn't this is just like a pit stop this is something that like it's not going to be forever like mm-hmm. you're not going to be like I was a winner all high school I was a winner we were winning a lot just, uh, first half of the season, but you know it's, it is what it is. At the end of the day, but like I would just again just tell myself like you gotta control what you can control, and like everything else will take care of itself. Slash, just like you can't dwell on like each game because like right. with the SEC and in college in general, it's just every game is right. you play every three days, you every right four days. Out, right? Yeah, like you'll go from the SEC, you'll play Tennessee one night, and then play Kentucky at Rupp the next night, yeah, and exactly. then you play. Ole Miss, and then you play Mississippi State, like it's and your those teams are all ranked that year. So it was like it was one of those where like, you gotta just continue just to like one, just get better and like really um, not even take like take practice seriously, but also just like it's it's a it's a um, quick turnaround and mm-hmm. it's like you know you can't dwell in the past and just um, do what you gotta do the next game to be better and mm-hmm. help your team win. So. So, um, at the end of the season, it didn't go the way you guys had hoped. Um, you're at another crossroads right now in your journey, right? So, high school, it's been kind of, I'm not going to say easy, you worked hard, but you, you saw it through, you had options. Uh, and then you went to Vermont, we, we didn't even talk about. Um, but you do well there, you get the offers you need to get. But now we're at a, a, we're at a pretty critical crossroads here. Do I go back to Vandy for a second year? Yeah. Or do I test the waters? Can you take us through the mindset of how you approach that situation? Mm-hmm. And because I'm not completely remembering the timeline, but I know Stackhouse enters the qu- equation at some point. When did you know Stackhouse was coming? And it, did that play in or was it too late? Because I, th- I want to say that you declared, I declared before, before yeah. Stackhouse, right? So just take us through that moment. Uh, we'll leave Stackhouse, Stackhouse out of it for now. Mm-hmm. But the year at Vanny is done. Is it time to go pro? Is it time to run it back? Well, for me, like, one, I knew I was coming off injury, and I knew that, you know, I was only going to get, like, so much better mm-hmm. in college. And, like, I just feel like, for me, I, didn't, I, I knew I was ready. Mm-hmm. And, but I also knew, like, the circumstances I was in, how my stock wasn't as high as it was in the start of the year. Mm-hmm. But I knew that 
with the opportunities in front of me in terms of like workouts and the combine, like I can regain that stock or regain that interest, whatever, and everything like that. Um, so yeah, I declared and stack stack came like a couple weeks later. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so like I was going into it, like I'm the test slash like, I know I'm ready. So I'm going to just, you know, I knew I was pretty confident I was going to get the combine invite. So I knew like, okay, going there, like every NBA is GM mm -hmm. front office person's there and I'm going to play the five on five mm -hmm. show what I can do, you know? And people had reported on that combine game as being your best game of the season, yeah. vanity considering. Yeah. So you must be you must be riding the wave at that point too. And I know you got um, from the top of my head. I didn't have to do much research for this because you're a guy I was following a lot. But uh, I remember the Pistons. They brought you in for a workout, and the Raptors brought you in for a workout. So it must be going well. Yeah, I had, I had like 13 workouts, oh, or 12 wow. workouts. But yeah, like so after the combine game, like I was leading score and rebounding in the game. Um, you know, I displayed, you know, what I've displayed in high school and then mm -hmm. throughout the year, but like in flashes, obviously in, the, in terms of my role, in terms of like, mm -hmm. uh, situation. So, but I showed what I needed to show. Um, and then, yeah, I knew, okay, now I got to go ahead in the workouts and continue the momentum, play well in the workouts, do what I can do, you know? Um, and I also, all, also knew like age was on my side too. Like I was mm -hmm. 19. You're right. Yeah, like early nineteen year old kind of injury too, but like, you know, did like showed what I can do in the combine and everything like that. So like I just felt like it was best for me to stay in mm -hmm. and, you know, bet on myself slash like, you know, believe whatever the path is, because everyone's path is different, like you see guys mm -hmm. all the time. So like whatever my path is, I'm gonna get there. Right. Regardless of if it's this year, next year or the year after. So it was like as after that combine game, I knew one I could play at at that level, and I knew I could be, you know, an NBA player, established player in the league. Because I think nine guys from my team got drafted that year, wow. and I led the the first game in scoring and rebounding, or the second in rebounding, or whatever. So I was like, okay, like I and I obviously talked to those guys right still. There. I know those guys. Yeah. I know I'm there, and I'm younger than them too. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, like I just you know. I got to go through a different path and different situations to get ready to be, but like I knew I was ready. So it was just about, you know, continue to work hard and get better throughout the draft process and everything like that. And then see what happens from there. So we go through the draft process. It, for whatever reason, it doesn't break your way yeah. when it comes to the draft. Um, I believe it was Memphis that took you on for summer league. Yeah. And then you matriculate your way to the, to the Windy City Bulls. Yeah. Um, so I hear mixed things about the G. Yeah. So you hear, um, oh, you know, it's like it's bus travel, it's 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 rigorous, it's you know, it's it's tough. Um, but I also hear it's improving a lot. How has your experience uh, with the with that first year of the G? Um, is it everything that people say it is? Is it all doom and gloom, or is it all right? I mean, the G's a grind. You, everyone say that. Everyone knows that. Um, for me. It was a crazy kind of roller coaster mm -hmm. that I knew was gonna want to mature me a lot that year. Cause I was with guys that I was like 19, with guys like 25, right. like you know, kids and stuff like that, yeah. whatever. But like other than that, like I didn't, I was benched. I didn't play the first like five games like at all. So I was like, I went from playing all the time, this is that, to like kind of like having to stay ready and mm -hmm. you know. Again, be a pro and like if I'm not playing, I gotta go get extra, extra shots. I gotta be shooting after games. I gotta be, you know, doing all that stuff. First one in, last one out, stuff like that. So just waiting for my opportunity and like knew that like the pros is all about opportunity at the end of the day. So like once I got that, I gotta, you know, take it by storm and do what I need to do. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, that first year in the G with the Windy City Bulls, I think you had a nice little cap to the season. Is that the 30 20 game? Yeah. Yeah. What's it like? Have like I'll I'll never have a thirty twenty game at LA Fitness versus versus like eighty year old. So tell me what what kind of mindset was in that game? How how did it feel? I mean, I was the last like seven games that that season. I was just like kind of on a tear. Like mm -hmm. so, I was like every game started getting like the floor just started getting more and more right. space, and like the the basket just looked bigger, and like mm -hmm. I was getting games with like 
10 to 15 boards with like 20 or something minutes sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, like, and I was I already got close to it. I think two times before that we played Westchester that year and I had 29 and 18. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, like it's, it's good. Table. It's, it it's can right happen. There. It can <laughs> happen if it just opportunity presents itself. But yeah. like, yeah, I just, I don't know that game. I just came out guns blazing. Like first I scored like, I don't know, eight, 10 straight getting boards and I just kept on just going and like just and then once I, I didn't even look at the scoreboard and then once it my one of my um vets on the the bench was like mm-hmm. yo like it's this is the game like you're getting that 30 and 20 like <laughs> like let's go so it was in the air already people are talking about it yeah because I, they, I've, they've seen it like yeah potentially happen and like yeah. either I wouldn't get the amount of playing time to right. finish it off or like I just wouldn't I'd be like three or four shy board right. shy or whatever so I was like, he's like, yeah, it's like, you know, like mm-hmm. get your 30 and 20, like, yeah. so whatever. And then, yeah, it just all happened pretty much like out of nowhere. And then, yeah, I, kn- I knew I was capable of it, yeah. but I just needed like the opportunity and like amount of minutes. Right. So it's just like, now it's just like, now it happened. Everything just kind of clicked that game. And it was just, it was great to feel and see. And I just felt like at that point I was like, I knew I was an NBA player mm-hmm. and I knew that not my 19 year olds put up 30 and 20 so still I was like, 19 yeah, yeah you, or yeah, early I turned matter, 20 like two years, months yeah. before I the first year so. yeah two months before so yeah. I was like yeah like I just got to stay at it and I, I didn't know COVID was going to hit so I just mm-hmm. knew that like at some point like NBA team was going to notice that like yeah so I just got to stay at it whatever but then COVID hit so it was just like you know I got a couple more questions I want to ask you I'm just going to make sure we're all good with the camera set up obviously yeah. I don't have anyone with us right now so back I, I wanted to go back a little bit and revisit a couple of things yeah. that I think we missed on the, along the way um, primarily you your Wikipedia will say you're a UK Niger, half UK half UK half Nigerian yeah. I think you are born in the UK yeah. but you have obviously grown up here yeah. and you have experiences with Team Canada yeah. how were your Team Canada experiences uh, it was great you know I got to play with the guys like long-term friends that I'm with now mm-hmm. uh, I'm so cool with now um, and then just the FIBA game, really, I feel like it developed my game to what plays a part into my game now in terms of making the right play and, you know, um, being able to, like, adjust in certain positions and versatility as well. It kind of played a part in that. Um, and then, yeah, just the level of, like, the national uh, with the national team, like, the, the world level is just crazy. You know, we played um, my first year in Cadet, we played um, – USA in the finals, had a big game there. It was great. That's when I kind of got in the scene, too. Um, and then the next year we went to the Worlds. We could, we should have went to the finals, but, like, obviously stuff didn't go as planned, but yeah. like, we came, like, fifth or fourth or something. But, like, it was just good to, like, really, again, be at the top, top level in the world, mm-hmm. seeing the best players your age in the world and yeah. being able to, you know, go at it and, you know, see who's, at the, who's the best and who's at the top. So, like, it was just – it was a great experience. And I was, obviously, like, I was able to play with, like, Iggy, like, yeah. RJ, um, Danilo, yeah. you know, guys like that that I'm so cool with to this day. So, so you, you go through the uh, junior Canadian team process. You have, a, you have a young boy that you train with, yeah. Nana, yeah. who also got to go through the same stuff as well. What kind of tips and feedbacks did you have for him and – you know, how how would you say, you know, obviously he did well, but like, what what kind of things did you um, see out of him and, you know, what kind of tips did you give him? I just told him, like, in, first of all, going to camp, like training camp, like, you just got to go kill everybody, like, on the glass, you know, yeah. show, like, everyone that, you know, you deserve to be on the team slash, like, you're the best power forward there, you know what I mean? Um, obviously, you know, Nana is going to Brown, whatever, but, like, Obviously, people know he's a high major guy. Yeah. So it's like I just knew like you gotta you know show it, even though you're not. It doesn't say it on the the what's it called the list, or whatever. But yeah. you know you know who you are. You know how much work you put in. So uh, that and then just I just told him just like obviously they're good players who like scores like Caleb mm-hmm. Houston, Ryan Nemhard, and um, that that Ben kid from uh, what's it called? I think it's from Montreal. But like. Oh, yeah, yeah, I met you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, tell me, you got to just find your role. And, like, you probably might not start, so, like, you got to just come off the bench and, like, mm-hmm. be that guy for them, like, that glue guy, energy guy. 
and then play within the system. Obviously, that's all about. That's what FIBA really is, and play within the system and just play your game and be confident, really, because like they're a really good team and they already had scores and stuff like that. So like he's not gonna come in and be, right? You know, and obviously there's NBA scouts and people watching too, so they want to obviously see how you fit and whatever. And if you can show you can play a role and really do that consistently, like mm -hmm. it's it's gonna take you a long way. So yeah, and. When you're talking about your experiences, you're talking about playing with Iggy. Yeah. You got to play with Iggy again yeah. uh, post COVID. You guys are in the G League bubble. Yeah. Uh, how was the G League bubble? What was you, you actually got to document some of your experiences with the Westchester Knicks? Yeah. They picked you up and they brought you along for the for the bubble. Yeah. But um, what was what was the bubble like? First of all, was it Disney as well? Or Disney? It was the same one actually. The other media guys were at, but um, yeah, it was crazy. Like you know, first of the experience was just like. We had to quarantine a couple of times. Slash, like, we also just, like, we had, like, indoor, we had, like, in-room workouts where we'd be on, like, Zoom all together. Okay. And then we'd, like, be, like, working out, like, doing everything, push-ups, all that stuff like that, like, band work and stuff. Um, but, yeah, like, it was always pretty nice, you know. Really, you know, got those food there. Like, everything was really provided for us, so it was good. And then, obviously, it was good for, like, team chemistry and team bonding because like each team was had like their own floor so like, we'd all see each other mm -hmm. chill outside or whatever it is but um it was yeah it just came full circle with me and Iggy because you know we literally played together since I think grade seven and grade eight yeah and like you know we got closer and closer and he's from Oakville which is literally like yeah. 10 minutes from me so like and we always talked about you know playing the league and you know being you know where we are today, but obviously even a better position. But like, yeah, I just always talked about it. And for it to come our second year and for us both to play well and us both to really, you know, be on the same team was just crazy and something that like we won't forget and hopefully we can do again one day, but you right. know, we'll see. And yeah, so you, you go through the G League bubble with Iggy again, you're playing probably the most consistent I've seen you play yeah. in the bubble yeah. um, again, Minutes fluctuate, role fluctuates, but I think you walk out of there fourteen and ten. Yeah, fifteen and ten. 15, yeah, fifteen and ten. <laughs> okay, so so you're doing your part again. Now, kind of a quasi crossroads here because you've done your job twice at this point. We're yeah. we're getting thirty and twenty at the end of the last season. Yeah. We're doing good this season. Yeah. Is the phone ringing more? Do you, is it looking up? How do you? What was that moment like for you? Um, for me, I, I, my, my mentality was going to bubble like show that you're one of the best players there, show that, you know, you belong. And not even that, like, my rookie was, like, the the second half of my rookie was, like, a fluke, but, like, showed, like, I won, I've gotten better because NBA is all about improvement and, like, showing you can get better and, you know. And, again, again I'm, I'm 21, so it's, like, I know going there, I'll still be one of the youngest guys. I think Draft Express put something out, and I was, like, top 10, one of the youngest guys there. So, but I was, like, yeah, like, just going in, show what you can do regardless of, you start, you don't start, whatever. But yeah, just in consistency. If, yeah, phone is ringing more, like, you know, there's more interest, stuff like that. But like, there's n nothing really concrete. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, like, I was, I knew for me, I was just like, I just want to go there with no regrets and like, mm -hmm. one, do what I'm supposed to do to my job, but also like, know that, like, internally that like, you know, I did everything I could mm -hmm. to, you know, showcase what I need to showcase. Because the bubble is more of a showcase and like, yeah. a, season championship type thing so so on your end it must feel like you've done this three times already yeah. you you come out of vandy you're winning player of the week you're, you're you're doing well the team yeah it's not where you want it to be but you show you show well windy city bulls part one end of the season you show well yeah. bubble very consistent great stats mm -hmm. you show well how do you keep it like it's coming it's coming it's like it's gonna happen like it, I'm frustrated talking about it. <laughs> how, yeah. how was it to go through it? Or did you even see it like that? Um, for me, like, again, my faith is a big thing. So I just got to, you know, I just tell myself just to trust God and trust his plan and his journey for me. But also just, like, I can only control what I can control. Mm -hmm. I can't control what people think about me or look at me as, as, a, as a player, as a person. But, like, again, like, I just got to, I just tell myself that like, I just got to keep on showing improvements every year, showing what I can do. And the numbers will speak for themselves, especially efficiency will speak for itself. Like numbers don't lie. So like, mm -hmm. 
and again i'm young too so i'm not like i knew like it's, it's gonna come eventually like it has to come you know and the i'm only i've only been going in the upper direction since i've cut into the league so it's like now it's just about you know being established and getting the right opportunity right situation because that's what all the league's about to be mm -hmm. honest and i just feel like once that happens for me like everything will take care of itself right. so so i don't i don't know if i'm allowed to ask this question yeah. so <laughs> but at this point bubble part one bubble part two you've proven to at least somebody that you can yeah. that you can play you can play at a high level yeah. i'm assuming at I don't know anything, but I'm assuming at some point you had to turn down a bag to keep going for the league, yeah. or there must have been, a, 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 yeah, there must there must have been. So, what's what's a temptation like to say? Well, these people value me right now. The money's there right now, but the league is still here. Yeah, well, turn on like you know some good <laughs> some good opportunities, but like. Um, yeah, no, for me, I just, one, I just know I'm an NBA player. Like, I can play in the FIBA style. I can do that. I know I can. Like, that's not, like, and I just feel like, for me, like, I've only gotten better each year. And, like, overseas, like, has been there for me since I was, like, 16. Like, so I just feel like the path I'm taking, like, obviously is different. And obviously, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's a bunch of roller coaster, this, is that. But, like, I just, one, I know an NBA player and I've, playing at NBA guys in the bubble and G League, whatever, preseason, whatever, and I've displayed it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like it's hidden or anything like that. So it's just a matter of time and also just, like, you know, keeping that peace and just, again, like, getting better and controlling what I can control because I can't control what mm -hmm. a team or a front office thinks about me, you know? Right. So. Actually, it might have been four times that you had, that you yeah. must, going back to my previous question about you feel like you've proven yourself a bunch of times, I feel like you've proven yourself as well. But the one part that kicked me in the stomach is just as a friend is just, um, I believe it was last preseason with the Bulls uh, against OKC. I think you dropped someone. You crossed someone up. He, he <laughs> fell that game. I think you had maybe like a dozen points in the fourth, and yeah. you, you let it come back. Yeah. You win the game. Yeah. But the roster has to be made that night. Yeah. And I think you're probably what last cut. I think it was between two other guys, and I think they had a contract situation. Yeah. So... Um, I think my next question based off of this is you had a lot of you're you're a man of strong faith yeah. and you were had your faith tested a bunch. Yeah. Last cut, if it was on the merits, I think you're there. Mm -hmm. Vandy situation, injuries, wh what point of the process tested your faith the most and what part of the process maybe you've seen the most dividends of having such strong faith? Um well one for me like my high school career was like you know very like it wasn't smooth but like i did what i was supposed to do and like everything that based on talent everything that happened that i wanted to happen happened so it's like look i for me it's like i just look what god did for me in the past and like i look what how he finds ways even like if i get put in a situation like where um I play, I start for three games and I don't play for two, three games or like I, my minutes fluctuate. Mm -hmm. I still somehow either get the, you know, the numbers, efficiency, like the stats don't, everything is mm -hmm. still there regardless of the situations I'd be in. So it's like, and that's all about like trusting him and like just, you know, knowing his plan is bigger. And like, I just know my path is something that will like, inspire, you know, mm -hmm. kids and, you know, people just, you know, one to hopefully bring them to Christ as a, main thing but also just to like know that like literally anything's possible you can actually do it regardless of what situation you get put in and regardless of what like what's around you what you can't control like you just have to just literally just keep going and like it will just have to come eventually and you figure it out because like I would say probably the past two years have probably been the hardest in terms of just like testing my faith because like I always get to like literally like two sets before the finish line and then like something will happen or like mm -hmm. there's some sort of like you know I feel like. so but it's just like you can't be getting that close if something is not about to like mm -hmm. come you know what I mean so like now it's just about like I just feel like for me I just feel like God is gonna is trying to put me in the right situation the right um right mindset mindset right situation and the right opportunity to actually like you know 
play meaningful minutes and showcase and then establish myself there, then, you know. But, again, I would take any situation because I just know I'll get out of it or whatever somehow, especially from how my career first started in the G, like mm -hmm. not really getting an opportunity, not playing for first five games. And, mm -hmm. of course, the game that, you know, gets me on the scene a little bit was in Toronto mm -hmm. when I went, like, 7-7 seven and seven from the field. You know, I had, like, a big dunk at the end and, like, from that game on, like everything's kind of took care of itself. So, like, now it's just about, like, you know, again, finding the right opportunity in the right situation. So, yeah. Is it harder to share these moments with your family and friends when it's so close to exactly what you want it to be, but it's, it's just that far off? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, you know, because obviously they've seen what I've gone through, what I've been through. Um, they, you know, they just, they do their best job of supporting me and wanting me to, you know, achieve all my dreams and my goals, whatever. Um, but the thing is, it's just like about, again, they just instill in me too, like you only control what you can control. Like mm -hmm. you can't like let that really rattle you because it could rattle you to a point where like you go from being like right there to like being a couple steps back and then you have to climb even more now and like mm -hmm. that's a whole other mental battle to go back and forth like so it's like it's just like you just gotta just put your your right foot forward and just like trust god and like let him kind of figure it out for you and like obviously again take care of your business on the court so you know mm -hmm. that you did everything you can and like you there's no regrets for you because like once I, I feel like once you get that that's when you get the level of peace mm -hmm rather than like you knew you could have done more in the court and like had this many points or this many yeah. whatever and like maybe they'll notice me more but like if you do what you're supposed to do an opportunity then it just it will take care of itself for you because you don't have to like worry about oh I didn't do this I didn't do that and like beat yourself up on it but obviously like I'm very hard on myself and like I you know I hold myself to a high standard but like I just don't you can't really beat yourself up because like every again quick turnaround like mm -hmm. every game and every game matters because, you, again, you're showcasing for every team. So, I think in a twisted way, in an end-around way, yeah. I think the win's going to feel better yeah. having gone what you've gone through. And yeah. I, I know it's coming. But before I let you go, w the world doesn't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. I don't know if you know where you're going for next season. But for whatever team comes back and watches this after you have decided, what have you worked on this summer? What can they expect from you as a player? And what goals do you have for yourself? Um, well, for me, I just know my game isn't perfect. And I know that, you know, I got to work on everything. Mm -hmm. Like, the greats work on everything. They don't just work on one specific part. But um, if I emphasize my shot, mm -hmm. uh, free throws. Um, but, yeah, just shooting and then just keep my ball handling polished and, mm -hmm. you know, Touch on the rim, obviously, but yeah, those I guess those were things I really emphasized. But like, again, just my shooting too, because I know once that becomes like really consistent, then like that'll take my game to a whole new level. Where like, you know, I kind of whatever I want in the court, because mm -hmm. guys got to close out on me, and I can pass and you know make plays and stuff like that. And then, what was the other question you said? Yeah, just what kind of goals do you have? For oh yourself? yeah, and then oh yeah, and me as a player, you said. Um, right now, I know I could bring like. Um, high energy, rebounding like at a high level. I'm efficient. Um, I can come in, you know, run the floor, and then make plays for others, care for others. Mm -hmm. And I think I can defend like one to five, two to five. I can switch on balls. I can guard guards. I can guard wings. I can guard bigs. And yeah, just bring energy.